Welcome everyone. This is a presentation on language history. This is the Indo-European language family. History of English language. So let us begin with language families. What is language family? So we all know that a lot of languages are there uh, in the world. People in different parts of the world use different languages and researchers found out that some of these languages have similarities that is why there are common aspects of the language so what do they do? these languages are in the past they trace the history the past of these languages and what did they find? they found out that this similarity ഈ പറയുന്ന ലാംഗ്വേജസിനൊക്കെ ഒരു സെയിം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു കോമൺ മദർ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നത് കൊണ്ടാണ് എന്നവർ കണ്ടുപിടിച്ചു ആ മദർ ലാംഗ്വേജ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് നൂറോ ഇരുന്നൂറ് വർഷം മുമ്പ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്ന ലാംഗ്വേജ് അല്ല ഒരുപാട് വർഷങ്ങൾക്ക് മുമ്പ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്ന ഒരു കോമൺ ലാംഗ്വേജിൽ നിന്ന് പല ബ്രാഞ്ചസ് സ്പ്ലിറ്റ് ആയി ആണ് ഇന്നത്തെ മോഡേൺ ലാംഗ്വേജസ് ഉണ്ടായത് എന്നവർ കണ്ടുപിടിച്ചു So, this common ancestral language, that is our proto-language. That is our language family. That common ancestor is mother language. That is why we have branches in one of the different versions of the language. So, that is how a language family is born. Now, this field of study is called philology. Uh, this is a study of language history and change. And it is believed that there are around 5,000 to 8,000 languages in the world. 5,000 to 8,000 living languages. Uh, there are dead languages also. Minimum one speaker is one living language. That is a dead language, an extinct language. There are around 147 language families. Adilonana, the Indo European language family to which English belongs. Our Malayalam belongs to the Dravidian language family. Now, how did this particular study, which is called historical linguistics, start? One word where historical linguistics practice is done. But we are going to be the most important title of Sir William Jones. He was a British official who was posted in India. And in the 18th century, he established a relationship between Sanskrit and ancient Greek and Latin. So he was a polyglot. He was very good at using multiple languages. And he studied Sanskrit and then he found out that there are some similarities between Sanskrit, Greek and Latin. So he is the one who we can say that uh, he is the one who started off historical linguistics. So he is also regarded as the father of historical linguistics. He gave um, some proofs. Uh, take for example the word father in Sanskrit the word is pitar in Latin it is pater and in ancient Greek it is a similar word otherwise then if you take the word brother in Sanskrit it is prater in Latin it is freighter and in ancient Greek we have a similar word so, this is what we have done in this video. Prove that there is some relationship between Sanskrit and the European languages of Latin and Ancient Greek. Now, if you take some modern languages, we can establish a connection with this. For example, take the English word door, D-O-O-R. Hindi is the word. And in Russian, we have a similar word 
അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ടേക്ക് ദ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് വേർഡ് ടു ഇൻ ഹിന്ദി ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ദോ ആൻഡ് ഇൻ റഷ്യൻ വി ഹാവ് എ സിമിലർ വേർഡ് സോ വി ക്യാൻ ഹാവ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് എക്സാമ്പിൾസ് ലൈക്ക് ദിസ് ടു പ്രൂവ് ദാറ്റ് സം ഓഫ് ദീസ് ലാംഗ്വേജസ് ആർ സിമിലർ നൗ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ഇസ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി ഇൻഡോ യൂറോപ്യൻ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഫാമിലി and the mother language of indo european language family is the proto indo european language and proto indo european language il ninnu ulbhavicha modern languages nanu ettom kudal speakers ullathu currently so there are about 445 living indo european languages and of this spanish has the highest number of speakers remember spanish has the highest number of speakers among the languages of the indo european language family we are only talking about the indo european language family not all the other language families taken together or you know um, we are not considering other language other language families so spanish has the um, most number of speakers which followed by um, english then hindi portuguese bengali russian punjabi german french and marathi so if it um, english is part of the germanic branch of the indo european language family the language family will have uh, different branches indian languages are part of the indic branch uh, whereas english is part of the germanic branch germanic branch can be divided into three subdivisions west germanic north germanic and east germanic um under west germanic we have english german and the modern dutch language and from north germanic developed danish the language of denmark swedish icelandic norwegian etc and the languages which emerged from east germanic are now extinct so you can say that german is the german and dutch are sister languages of english so this is the uh, diagram which shows the proto indo european language mother language and the uh, modern languages which developed from the uh, mother so if you look at the um, extreme left we have the indo iranian branch uh and which has a subdivision the indic branch and from indic developed all the um um north indian languages sanskrit bengali hindi urdu gujarati etc and you, if you look at the extreme right we have the germanic branch uh with subdivisions north germanic and you know west germanic and east germanic is not shown because all the languages uh, which emerged from east germanic are now extinct and under west germanic we have three divisions anglo frisian old dutch and old high german and from anglo frisian we have old english which evolved to middle english which again evolved to the modern english language which we know today so which language has the most number of native speakers most number of native speakers in a for a language it is mandarin chinese mandarin version of chinese chinese has different um, dialects like cantonese hanan etc and it is a mandarin dialect of chinese which has the uh, most number of users over 1 billion users remember mandarin chinese is not part of the indo european language family so mandarin chinese is followed by spanish spanish uh is comes in the second place with over 400 million language users you might be wondering how spanish became second uh you are forgetting the fact that uh most of the south american countries uh use spanish then spanish is followed by our very own english which has over 330 million users now what kind of study is or does historical linguistics employ the study employed by historical linguistics is called diachronic study because 
diachronic study is how you study a lang the history of a language and its development you study the development of a language through time you study how it evolved and uh, and and it developed over a period of time now another type of study is the synchronic study synchronic study is when you study a language at a particular point in time over time alone reward varsham eduthundaya changes padikunnadalla synchronic study adu diachronic study aan diachronic study ennu parayunnathu oru vaadu varsham oru bhashakkundaya changes um adinte development okke padikunnadana diachronic study synchronic study ennu parayunnathu edengilu oru point in time il ഒരു ലാംഗ്വേജ് എങ്ങനെയാണ് യൂസ് ചെയ്തിരുന്നത് എന്ന് പഠിക്കുന്നത് അത് എൻ്റെ പേരിൽ നിന്ന് തന്നെ നമുക്ക് മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ പറ്റും ഡയക്രോണിക് സിങ്ക്രോണിക് സിങ്ക്രണിക് സിങ്ക്രോണിക് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ സിങ്ക്രണൈസ്ഡ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഒരേ സമയം എന്നാണ് എൻ്റെ അർത്ഥം സോ ഇപ്പോൾ ഒരു ഉദാഹരണത്തിന് ഇഫ് യു ടേക്ക് മലയാളം സോ ഇഫ് യു ഡു എ സ്റ്റഡി ഓൺ മലയാളം ആൻഡ് ഹൗ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് യൂസ്ഡ് ഇൻ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ഡിസ്ട്രിക്ട്സ് ഓഫ് കേരള റൈറ്റ് നൗ it is a synchronic study whereas if you trace the history of malayalam malayalam uh, dravidian uh, mother language il ninnu engane develop cheyidu ennu or study ningal nadathukanengil adu diachronic study and uh, another example is if you want to uh, study how english was used during the time of shakespeare avadeyum ningal or point in time select cheyunnundu which is the time of shakespeare annu അരിസ്റ്റോക്രാറ്റ്സ് എങ്ങനെ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഉപയോഗിച്ചിരുന്നു പിന്നെ കോമൺ പീപ്പിൾ എങ്ങനെ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ഉപയോഗിച്ചിരുന്നു എന്ന് പഠിക്കുന്നത് അതിനെ സിങ്ക്രോണിക് സ്റ്റഡി എന്ന് നമുക്ക് വിളിക്കാം അവിടെ ഷേക്സ്പിയറിൻ്റെ ടൈം എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ അവിടെ കുറച്ച് സമയങ്ങൾ കുറച്ച് കുറച്ച് വർഷങ്ങളത് നീണ്ട് നിൽക്കുന്ന ഒരു സ്റ്റഡി ആണെങ്കിൽ പോലും വി ആർ ആക്ച്വലി സിലക്റ്റിങ് എ പർട്ടിക്കുലർ ഫ്രെയിം എ പർട്ടിക്കുലർ പോയിൻ്റ് ഇൻ time we are not looking at how english was used before shakespeare or after shakespeare uh, we are looking at how english was used during shakespeare's time so that can be classified as synchronic study thank you